Green Black Counters Company. So, we have Winding Constrictor is an Aether Revolt card that's very reasonable with the different synergies that we have here. So, if one or more counters, we put on an artifact or creature you control, put that many plus one on each of those counters. If you... Um, and then this works with our various things that get counters. So we have uh, Yorvo, Lord of Garenberg. We have Skyclave Ranger. We have Rishkar here, which puts counters on two things when it comes into play. Um, one of the things that's really great about this deck is we have a plethora of good one drops here. We have some Pelt Collectors, Knights of the Ebon Legion, Land War Elves. And then for card advantage at the very top end of our curve, we've got Collected Company to hit our 31 lovely creatures with, as well as some copies of the Great End Shear that synergize very well with Growth Chamber Guardian and just when we're playing out a ton of creatures in general. Um, Green Black has a fast land tier, so we can play your vote pretty consistently. We've got uh, 20 green sources, plus four copies of Land War Elves lets us cast our triple green card pretty consistently. And then Eggdom's Awakening here lets us uh, bring back some of our things in the mid to late game when we don't need it as land. So let's go ahead and dive on into some games with this and see how this feels today. Oh, crap. Um, Big Kitty Fan, thank you for the 41 months. I appreciate that, welcome back. Ro rogues really isn't a deck in historic like it sees some fringe amount to play but like rogues isn't good enough to be like oh i'm gonna play this card to counter the rogues deck m carryton thanks for the two years i appreciate that welcome back Main consideration for Turn Timber. So Turn Timber just isn't a land you want to, like, Turn Timber, getting to seven mana is a lot of mana. Is basically the TLDR. Whereas, um, you know, what's it called? Um, Egg Domes can be played on, like, five and six mana for good effect. All right, I'm on the draw. I'm going to try and draw a couple of lands here. A true skill game my opponents and I play. Magical Joe Bo, thank you for the five months. Welcome back. Wow, they're gonna murder my elf. That's rude. Yeah, so the problem with Champion of Lampolt is if you include a card like that, you basically can't play Great Henge because you don't have enough high power things early. Because I, I agree with you, in order to fit that card in, we basically have to be playing, um, we have to like cut your vote. And your bow, your bow are, is our enabler. One of our better enablers for Great Henge. Ooh, blue black flash, eh? I think I'd rather have Skews than Knight, so I'm gonna start with Knight here. Okay. This gets bigger whenever they play a spell on our turn, so I don't think I really wanna run into like, if they have like this like plus a Fatal Push here, they'd get to eat my Constrictor. Yeah, exactly. Pretty sure I just take this trade where this thing gets huge.
For people that keep asking me why we're not playing cards that don't get hit by Collected Company, stop recommending cards that don't get hit by Collected Company. Hello, baby daughter and lovely wife. How are my favorite girls this morning? Dad, the kids are running mom ragged. The kids are running mom ragged. You running your mom ragged? Never. You're so cute. So, do we just deploy second growth chamber guardian here? Is these these tap for green mana here? Yeah. I'd show you the Hugo Haley's on the screen, but you don't understand that yet. Dad, you don't know what I understand. You are pretty smart. So, gonna have to chump block the cutthroat here. And then trade with one of these night bonders, then maybe Collected Company can get us back in this game. They did just top a card there though, which is scary. Bulletproof Pope, thank you for the 46 months. It's a very long time. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Mm. I agree. Mm. You hear the camera twisting and turning up there? I think we just passed the turn here. Really no reason to play into a potential counter spell when we can just pass with Collective Company up. And it's kind of innocuous here because it also kind of looks like, you know, maybe we're passing with, um... Oh! Oh, I don't have Collective Company up anymore. Because they killed Rishkar. Awkward. That's fine. We can activate. Activating Knight here is still fine as well, right? They don't, they don't have good attacks. Disaster! Did you spill my water? Mm. Over. Like, try again. Can you cut your mom some slack the rest of the day? If their last card's not a counterspell, we're in a pretty great spot here. Yeah, wow. Okay, so we get to do this. And this triggers the Growth Chamber Guardian again to find us another friend. And let's just guess this. Oh, are you trying to grab the keyboard there? You want to be a gamer? Like your family? Don't worry, you're going to get to be a gamer. Yeah. You big heel? Yeah. <laughs> she does. She has more hair than me now, chat. Not that that's like a strong accomplishment, but. Yeah, you think it's funny that you have more hair than your dad? So does chat. Chat thinks it's funny that you have more hair than your dad, too. That's a, that's a fake bite apple. It's still chewy, though. <laughs> Thank you for coming to visit, baby daughter. You good for your mom? Alright, Dad, I only have one mode. It's terror. Soaring Thought Thief is actually pretty scary here. That kills us in uh in two attacks here. Actually, I think we just let this happen. Because if they have a counter spell for company, that's good, because then Henge resolves. We don't have anything with reach, but Great Henge is going to start gaining us two life per turn. It's Louie! Thank you for the 32 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. See, chat, I skillfully let them mill two non-creatures here off the top of my deck. 
So that way my collected company is more likely to hit bangers. Well, fingers crossed their last card isn't a counter spell that they're saving. It could it could be. They paused on that for a while. Okay. Well. Pretty sweet interaction. Yeah, nice. All right, so I think this is probably a fatal push matchup. Honestly, scavenging use is probably pretty good here, huh? They're gonna be killing a lot of our stuff and this recovers, recovers nicely after the fact. I want to trim here. Rishkar was like, okay, that game, but I feel like this might be the trim. Like, they're going to be killing a lot of our stuff, which makes our board kind of small. Could just be like Thick Boy Yorvo, too. The question is, do I do I want to fit in these, these scavenging uses is a real question. Are, are these better than some copies of these? Probably not. I'm going to coward split these. Having, having um, some number of decent threes in our deck makes our collecting companies better too. That's something to think about. Yeah, this is great. Hmm, who's keeping our graveyard small is a real thought. With this draw, do I just pass? I think so. I don't think there's a reason to play into their open mana here. <laughs> and then we like run into the counter spell here at end of turn. And then on my turn, we get to play all three of these.
Yeah, I'm not I'm not planning to dip back into more rune tier. Uh, I played a bit yesterday and it's just I just didn't have fun. I'm glad I'm glad other people are enjoying it. So if you want if you want rune tier content, I'd encourage you to go watch someone that still enjoys the game. But their what their game has become is just not something that I find fun anymore. Yo, I feel like what they want their game to be and what I want to get out of a card game are different things, so... Rather than complain about it, I'm just gonna play other things. Like Magic and Historic is great. Uh, Swim had been on a long break, but I imagine he's back with the patch yesterday. What happened to make you no longer enjoy it? They turned their game into a bunch of combo decks. Their game used to be pretty, the average game plan rune cherry used to be pretty mid rangey in decks that played to the board. And the decks that are competitive in their current format are largely linear aggro and line, and combo decks. And in a, in a best of one game without sideboards, I don't really find the play patterns of those types of things. It feels, it feels a lot, uh, honestly, it feels a lot like Magic, and I don't like Magic as a best of one game. The way the way the gameplay changed, it's just not enjoyable as a best of one setting for me. I think, I think if their game had like best of three with sideboards, I'd probably still enjoy it, but they don't have any plans to implement anything like that. Most, most, most non-Magic games are best of one, and their tournament formats are these multi-deck formats, as opposed to sideboards. And it's definitely, you know, part of me being a Magic Boomer, I'm sure, but I greatly prefer best of three with sideboards. I mean, I don't think combo decks are inherently bad. But just like si basically effectively like single card combos or like show and tell style combos or combos that are difficult to impossible to interact with, those types of things are bad. So like I think combo decks are engaging and even even healthy for a game to have, but they need to have counterplay. I, I actually think it's fine for combo decks to be competitive and even arguably the best decks, so long as again the ca the counterplay element is the most important thing. Yeah, Infect. We actually, we talked about Infect earlier today, in fact, where I was like, I love Infect as a deck because the number of interactive points that it has is huge. I think Infect's a great example of the type of, uh, type of gameplay you want out of a combo deck. Second, second Rishkar is not a stellar draw here. Yikes. Nope, not you. Stream title's definitely wrong. Thanks for the heads up. Dodge a cleave, we can dodge a ball, chat. There's a bad die roll to lose. They chose not to discard, so I assume that means we're dead to cleave here.
And like, so like even, even this is a good example, right? So like a game like that, where I lost largely because I was on the draw, I wouldn't say that a game like that feels good to play. Like Magic has a ton of linear aggro and combo and I like Magic, but the fact that now post board, I get to go, okay, I'm gonna bring in these fatal pushes I'm gonna bring in these scavenging oozes. I'm gonna cut these Rish cars that are kind of awkward against their creatures that outsize me. The fact that I get to do this and I get to adjust my deck and make it better and we play a best of three, so my opponent's deck that's capable of high rolling likely doesn't high roll me every single game. That gives a lot more satisfying gameplay experience in my opinion. I'd encourage you to go watch my Rune Terra video, Bender. I posted a video a week and a half or so ago titled Rune Terra What Changed that I went through all the details in it of what I what I feel happened happened if what what happened to change their game into something that I really wasn't enjoying. Is it an inscription of abundance matchup? Maybe. It's probably right to trim this hinge here. Yeah, the giving players sideboards in best of three increases player agency a great deal. be wrong to play this out before I can make it bigger. So, the land draw is actually pretty decent here, right? Because let's be grow growth chamber into fart the growth chamber. And if I pass here, this is a little bit bad against Stomp. But it lets me threaten to double block the Ferocidon, which is nice. are unfortunately going to be dead to a cleave again here. We're going to hope that that doesn't happen this time around. No cleave is excellent. We are getting stomped. That's unfortunate. Maybe I'm just supposed to pull the trigger on that ahead of time. Tough to say. Okay, let's do this into this into eat my thing out of the bin, get a 4-4. Four, four. This is this is where the Eldraine happens. I'm excited for Eldraine to rotate out of standard so that way like like Eldraine feels like a non-rotating format 
power level, all things considered. Opponent's ooze is cooler. It's not. This is like the the poor person's the poor person's border. I'm pretty sure you got this for free for some type of event. Okay, look at how out of place these look next to each other. My borderless cards are uniform and excellent. have that squeeze art, so it must have been free at some point. Yeah, exactly correct. I didn't say all of my cards are borderless chat. I said this one matches the other one that is. Might have been right to wait to play this, so I had two green for my scavenger goose here. Another questing beast. If I put winding plus night in front of this, then they have to choose to trade for one of those. I, I could just ditch an elf as a game four. That's probably better, huh? Yeah, I like that. Hey, thanks for the 14 months. Wait, wait. Why not block with the 1-1 one, one elf instead of the knight? Because this is a 4, four attack, so if I would have put these two in front of it, my opponent wouldn't have been able to kill both of them. It would have been 5 toughness to its 4 attack. The knight only triggers on my end step, Neil, so this doesn't trigger when they hit me on their turn. Totally reasonable. Thank you for the entire year. Welcome back. Yes, we are definitely eating things before they get mana. This does put me off of being able to activate Ebon Legion this turn, but I think that's still fine. Honestly, that's still probably good enough to beat us here. They're gonna get to trade. Oh. Uh, okay. Deal. Definitely, definitely, definitely was expecting them to double block my 8 8 with their 4 4s.
Uh, your sentence needs some more English there, Kamiya's cat girl. You didn't, you didn't equate words appropriately. Second, third Bone Crusher Giant is pretty good. I say is my favorite thing to do in magic. I don't know that I really have a particular. Let's draw it, draw a meaningful spell. It's not, it's not a good start to the draw meeting from spell plan chip. My favorite is drawing the same card I just scribed to the bottom. <laughs> uh. really have a favorite type of deck anymore. Once upon a time, I probably would have answered you bad tempo decks, but I don't know. These days, I don't really just play one thing. So this gets to become a 3-4 this turn. And honestly, we're probably just going to die to this Ascendant Spirit, huh? If they, if they have another land. Twenty-three Thassa's Oracle, seventeen land doesn't sound very good. Spirit getting bigger here is kind of a vomit. We can at least jump block it with Belt Collector this turn. We're just, we're just in here. They're gonna get to bump this to a 2-3 and then make it a 6-6 six, six flyer next turn. Beetle push, an inscription of abundance, sound great. Great hen sounds really slow and clunky. Screws is kind of mediocre. They're not really killing our stuff. They're just going around it. It's a little bit on the expensive side. This is a kite sale freebooter matchup. Pull the curve down and get a little bit more interactive. So far, our deck kind of just feels like a bad girl deck. Like we're doing kind of, kind of similar things with Collected Company, but it's just not, not as powerful or consistent. It doesn't feel like. Kind of wish I had my seven back.
He actually kind of an amusing thought because people are playing are playing decks with a bunch of crabs that mill in it. It's probably strictly optimal to figure out the ratio of things you want in your deck and then play like 200 cards or so. So that way your deck's basically identical, but you're better against the mill deck. I would imagine if you're looking to min-max the new historic format a little bit. Because you could, you could play more than... You can play whatever number of cards you want. Unmoored Ego mills 200 cards, they're all the same card. I don't actually think that's true. I'm pretty sure Unmoored Ego says four cards. Yeah. Yeah, I remember what Unmoored Ego does, because Unmoored Ego can take lands. Lawyer. If you're gonna actually meet Twitch chat, at least know what the card does that you're actually me about. Seems great for us, right? And we're just dead here again, right? Yeah. This one, this one might be a quick one. Let me give this, I give this one more shake, but maybe, maybe we'll also play Big Red. If this deck, if this deck's a trash fire, Big Red had a bunch of people vote for it too. plays here, huh? Pretty unlucky.
Is there a deck list for the Citadel Storm deck in the queue? No, unlike a lot of Magic content creators, I don't waste my time building decks for the new set until we have the whole set spoiled. People, people that are posting deck lists with deck ideas already with new cards, like, they're wasting their time and yours. Just like, take a deep breath, wait a week, see what comes, see what gets released. Oh, it's for the new set. Yeah, there aren't any storm cards currently legal, Sleepy Dog. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be done with this deck. This deck's not very good. So, this deck, this deck's just a bad girl deck. It's, uh, it's aggressive draws just aren't good enough. Great Henge is much worse than Ember Cleave when it comes to pushing damage through, so... We're going to go ahead and uh, relegate this one to the bin, I think.